بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد قال الشيخ إمام محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى إمام Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah ta'ala said, and this is the first, um, the first of the major sins that take you out of the fold of Islam, from the treaties explained by Dr. Saleh As-Saleh rahmatullahi well, Shaykh Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala said, I'lam anna nawaqid al-Islam ashirat al-nawaqid al-awu shirk fi ibadati Allahi ta'ala qala Allahu ta'ala inna Allah la yaghfiru wa yushrika bi wa yaghfiru ma duna thalik liman yasha wa qala ta'ala innu man yushrik billahi fakad harram Allahu alayhi al-jannata wa ma'wahu al-nar wa ma li al-zalimina min ansar وَمِنْهُ الضَّبْحُ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ كَمَنْ يَذْبَحُ لِلْجَنِّ أو لِلْقَبْرِ So the first nullifier of faith or iman, meaning that it negates your iman, that you cease to be a Muslim from this sin. This sin is something that takes you out of the fold of Islam. Is shirk in the worship of Allah. Associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which means to associate something and or anyone in the worship of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, as we already mentioned, Verily Allah forgives not setting up rivals in worship with Him, but He forgives whom He pleases other sins than that. Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushirika bihi wa yaghfiru maduna thalik lamayin sha. And then in the, in the next ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily, whoever sets up rivals in worship with Allah, then Allah has forbidden a jinnah for him, and the fire will be his abode. And in another, the third ayah, <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ حَرَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارُ وَمَا لِلْظَالِمِينَ مِنْ صَارِ Well, that's the second ayat. Then he says, رَحْمَةُ الْعَلَيْهِ وَمِنْ هُوَ ذَبْهُ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ كَمَنْ يَذْبَهُ لِلْجَنِّ أُولِ الْقَبْرِ And from the types of shirk, so the scholars, they mention one of the fu'aid or benefits from the ulama that they mention so here he said وَمِنْ هُوَ ذَبْحْ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ كَمَنْ يَذْبَحُ لِلْجِنِّ أو لِلْقَبْرِ and from it meaning from shirk is sacrificing to other than Allah and whoever are similar to the way that some people sacrifice to the jinn and some to the graves Meaning that these were practices prevalent during the time of Muhammad ibn al Wahhab. And likewise, the habit of Allah, in this day and age, we still have people who say, La ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah, and they sacrifice to the graves. They actually slaughter sheep, camels, goats, and animals, and put the, uh, you know, have various practices. They sacrifice those things for the sake of the dead or in the name of the dead or offer it to the dead similar to the way the Buddhists some Buddhist sects offer things to the, their Gohanzen which is a, an altar or some people offer things to statues or even before the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu not just the pagan Arabs but many pagan communities around the world in Europe uh, you know the Romans and the Greeks uh, and many other communities used to offer things to the dead and offer things to statues, things that, had, that never had life, nor would they come to life, nor could they harm, nor could they benefit. 
So these are pre-Islamic practices that Islam came to, uh, to supersede and to return people back to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And I think that's very well understood by many in the community. However, unfortunately, many amongst the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam still commit shirk still worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, although they do not consider it worship. This is very important. Like if you look, if you were to look at some of the Sufi websites, or if you were to probably talk to people that are known in the English speaking community like uh, Nuh Hamin Keller or uh, Hamza Yusuf or uh, Abdul Karim, one of his uh, teachers there or Zaid Shakir or people like this, they will explain things. They'll say, no, we don't worship other than Allah. But when it comes to, now I can't claim that they are doing this, but definitely some of their scholars, which are well known, like Habib Jeffrey, Jeffrey and things like, and, and others, claim that these practices are permissible and actually do these things. And alhamdulillah, I've been to Yemen I lived in Yemen and I lived in Hadramaut as well in Dar al Hadith and Sheher. And in that province of Hadramaut is the Merkaz or the Institute of Study that Habiba Jeffrey is, uh, uh, I think he is the main proprietor or what have you of that institution. And it's well known that that institution that they seek blessings from certain places of prayer and they say that prophet so-and-so prayed here or saint so-and-so prayed here they visit the graves and do uh, various practices there which either contain shirk or lead to shirk and what all of them will say and deny is they'll say we do not commit shirk and Shaykhana Shaykh Abdullah al Mar'i, Hafidullah Ta'ala, from Dar al Hadith and Shahr, he used to always mention this qaida, this principle. Al Ibra bi haqaiq, Al Ibra bi haqaiq, Lisa bi And I mention this all the time in my Daru, so hopefully those people who follow some of my lectures will learn this qaida, learn this principle, and understand it so that they can apply it and spread it, because it's a qaida of Ahl Sunnah. So al ibra bi haqaiq laysa bi musammiyat, which means that the truth or the reality of something is in its substance, not in what it's called. So although they deny that it's shirk, they say, no, this is not shirk, this is ibadah. Or they say, this is not shirk, we're just seeking to come closer to Allah through this intercessor, through this bottle of water. This water here, I'm, the person might say, I'm seeking, I'm seeking intercession from this water. Meaning, I'm not pure enough. This water is tuhur, it's pure. So I'm going to direct my prayer to it or through it in order to reach Allah because I am not pure enough. This is, in essence, some of their arguments with regards to the dead and the dead saints. They feel that they are not clean enough or they have too many sins, which is very similar to who? to some of the Catholic communities that seek they seek forgiveness from the priest because they believe that they have too many sins to have that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator of the heavens and earth so then therefore they have to go through an intermediator uh, an intermediary like uh, a priest so likewise, some of the Ummah of Muhammad, some of those people who say, La ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah, they bear witness that there's no God worthy of worship except Allah, and that Muhammad وسلم, was the last prophet and messenger of Allah, but they negate that, uh, that shahada by sacrificing and doing acts of worship, of worship to other than Allah, to their intermediaries, regardless of what their argumentation is. It's still shirk. And it's still something that negates your Islam and negates your faith and negates your Iman. No matter how sincere you are because you went against the other principle 
in order to have our deeds accepted is that it's in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is very serious. An ibra bi haqaiq laysa bi musambiyat. That the ibra, the reality of something, is in its substance, not in what you call it. You may change the name of something, but it's the reality of it is in its substance. And likewise, this is just an example of the qaida in general, not related to shirk, but for example, you have the extremists now, like ISIS and ISIL and IS, or whatever they call themselves. Of course, they call themselves IS, but really that's a belittlement of Islamic State. But they call themselves the Islamic State, and they say that they're performing jihad. So this is the claim. But in reality, is that jihad by cutting off the heads of reporters? Is that jihad by killing Muslims? Is that jihad by uh, someone converting under your, why they're captured by you? And by the way, they're just a, a, a reporter or a, an aid worker or something like this. And they convert to Islam and then you still want to behead them? What kind of Islam is that? What kind of jihad is that? So the reality of something is in a substance, not in what the people claim or call. And likewise, this was the principle with shirk that we were mentioning. Some of the things uh, Dr. Saleh mentioned, he said, one, shirk in the worship of Allah. And then he mentioned those ayahs that we mentioned. And he said, two, uh, actually that's referring to the second principle. So he didn't give a lot of... Uh, details about this but just mentioning about Tawheed which I think is already known to us that Tawheed uh, the ulama some of the ulama of Ahl Sunnah they've cl uh, classified Tawheed into three categories which is well known to us today and those classifications are Tawheed uh, Ar-Rububiya, Tawheed Al-Uluhiya wa Tawheed Al-Asma'i wa Sifat Tawheed uh, Arububiya means the lordship of Allah, that Allah is the only Lord. He's the creator of the heavens and earth. He is Ar Razak, He's this, you know, He provides for us, etc. So it's referring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's lordship. Tawheed uh, al Uluhiya refers to that all the worship, anything that Islam defines as worship, that it goes only to Allah. So you violate Tawheed al Uluhiya by sacrificing, because sacrificing is an act of worship. If your intention is to come closer to Allah, and you sacrifice to the dead, uh, you, you uh, sacrifice for whatever, then, then you've went against this uh, Islamic tenet of Tawheed and Ibadah, that this worship is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Likewise, if you pray to someone, even if you just say, I, I want to pray to the president, for example, or I want to pray to the dead saint, so-and-so. I want to pray to Imam, so-and-so. Or I want to supplicate. All of those are known as worship in Islam. Dua. The Prophet said that dua hua ibadah. That supplication is worship. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, wa aqimu salat. You know, and, and, and pray the prayer. Prayer is worship. So since those are acts of worship, you cannot direct them to anyone except the law. And if you do, that means you've committed shirk and you've violated Tawheed al-Uluhiyah, monotheism, what Islamic monotheism, you violated that. And the last category is al-Asma'i wa Sifat, in that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divine names and attributes which are unique to him alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the general principle with that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitab al-Kareem, laysa kamithli shay wa huwa sabi'un. Basir. That there is nothing that resembles him, or there's nothing that resembles him, or, or you know, can be comparable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he is the all seeing, all hearing. Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the divine uh, um, name and attribute of being the all hearer or the all-seer, and that means he possesses hearing and sight. The, those are his attributes. Hearing is his attribute, and sight is one of his attributes. And his name is that he is the all-hearer, the all-seer, letting us know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divine names and attributes. We have the attribute of hearing and seeing. 
but there's no comparison. There is nothing that resembles him. So Allah negates that there's a resemblance to him with regards to those uh, names and attributes or in any way, shape, or form. At the same time, he affirms that he does have those have the attributes of hearing and sight, but his are not like his creation, and his creations are not like his. His are perfect. He can hear everything. He can see everything. We have hearing and sight, and it's limited, and we don't know how his attributes are, and we don't ask, nor do we need to know. So those are some basic things regarding Tawheed. And just to know that this first principle, shirk, of course, negates Tawheed. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us, bless us with ikhlas, with the bad. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.